Algebra 2, this is Chapter 5, Section 6. This is the fourth video in the series, and it's going to be uh, the third example. Um, so we want to take the cube root times a cube root and find out what we get. Remember, you can break things apart, so this is actually 5 times the cube root of 10 times the cube root of 10 times the cube root of A times the cube root of A, and that takes care of all of that one, and then times the cube root of 10, and times the cube root of A, and that takes care of this one over here. So now that it's breaking apart, remember cube root, you're looking for groups of 3. So I have my 5, which is just a 5. And then I have a cube root of 10, cube root of 10, cube root of 10. I have three of them. So the cube root of basically, that's the cube root of 10 to the third. And then I'm looking at my A. So I've got cube root of A, cube root of A, cube root of A. So again, that is the cube root of A to the third. From there, I can reduce it. So the 5 is just a 5. The cube root and the cubing basically cancel, so that's times 10. And the cube root and the cube cancel, and that's times A. So final answer would be 5 times 10 is 50 A. So that big monstrosity simplifies down to 50 A. So let me look at another one, a little bit more complicated. And I'm probably not going to write it out in as much detail. So the 6 is just the 6. So I'll do this side in red. 6 is a 6. This is going to be the cube root of 3 squared, n squared, and then do this one in green. So this is times 3, and this is the cube root. And 24, I know, is 4 times 6. And it's a bunch of other things, but I know 4 times 6, 4 is a perfect square. Okay, so that is going to be a 2 squared, which is, I'll write that down, 2, um, hold on, let me back that up a second. I'm thinking ahead of where my final answer is, and I'm, I'm, th I'm going to lead you astray. Um, let's go with it 8 times 3, so that would be 2 cubed times 3 times n. Let's just put it in there. It's prime factorization. That'll be easier for you in the long run. Then I'm going to rearrange everything. So I'm going to put my, my 6 times my 3. And then I'm going to rearrange this stuff in this radical and this radical to um, be grouped together. Since we can break them apart, we can put them back together. So this is the cube root. I'm going to put my 3 squared here. So that's that 3 squared, and this 3 over here times 3. And then I'm going to have my 2 cubed times 2 cubed. And then I'm going to have my n squared times n squared, and my n times n. And that doesn't, neither one of those look like n's, they look like h's now. Let me fix those up to the n's. Okay. So 6 times 3 is 18. I'm just going to make that my 18. And I'm going to leave this my radical just for sake of showing you one more step. So 3 squared times 3, that's actually a 3 cubed. My 2 cubed is cubed already. And n squared times n is actually n cubed. So this one works out fairly nicely. I'm going to have my 18 on the outside. Now I can bring out a 3. 3 can go to the outside. I can bring out a 2. And I can bring out an n. And that gets really big when you multiply 18 times 3 times 2. And 18 times 3 times 2 is actually 108. And the n just hangs along there, so it's 108n, final answer. OK, let's go through a few more examples of these. I've got two more examples. Um, hopefully, by the end of these, you understand it completely. So this is a square root, right? So it's got to have groups of 2. Um, so I'm going to rewrite, this is going to be 3 times the square root of, and 12 is 
4 times 3, and 4 is 2 squared, so it's going to be a 2 squared times 3. And then I'm going to write this other one times 2, and 21 is 7 times 3. So times 7 times 3. Then I'm going to put it all back together. So I have my 3 times my 2, right? This 3 here times that 2 over here. And I'm going to put my radical. And I've got my 2 squared. I'm going to have 2 3, so that's 3 squared. And then I'm going to have 7. Now every time there's a square, that cancels out with my square root. So I'm going to put the 3 times the 2 and make that a 6. And then I'm going to bring out a 2. I'm going to bring out a 3. And I'm left with my 7 inside. Then I can multiply this stuff outside. 3 times 2 is actually 6. 6 times 6, that's 36 square roots of 7. And last example. So I'm going to have a negative 3 times 5. I'll just put those together right away. So that's going to be a negative 15. Then I'm going to deal with my 24. 24, and I want square roots. I want groups of 2. So that's going to be a 24 is 4 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. So hopefully you see 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. So I'm breaking it out so I see my groups of 2. Uh, 20, 20 is 4 times 5. So you see where I went with that? Um, always looking for perfect squares. If I'm doing square roots, perfect cubes, I'm looking for cube roots. So then I can put this um, back here. So that's going to be a 4 squared, this 4 times that 4, times 2 times 3 times 5. So 4 squared, square rooted, that's going to bring a 4 on the outside. And 2 times 3 times 5, those are all prime, and they are not square roots. So 2 times 3 times 5 stays on the inside. And then I'm ready to multiply together. So I have 4 times 15, which is 40, 60. So negative 60 on the outside. And this would be 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30, square root of 30 on the inside. Final answer. It's as simplified as it gets. So. That's how we multiply with our radicals and reduce them.